Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Let's go over the five game NBA slate for today on DraftKings. But before we continue, as always, if you guys could just leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Really helps me out, really appreciate it. You can also follow me over on Twitter, I'm at ChrisPanel16. And if you're to support over on Patreon, it's always much appreciated. You can get access to any of the extra content that I put out every single day or every single week, just depending on the sport. For example, every single night I got NBA going on, I have my entire cheat sheet, data sheet, all that stuff going on. I have my projections, my DVP chart, my Discord chat. When you sign up on Patreon, you get put into my private Discord chat. You can chat it up with me all day. Unless I'm sleeping, I won't reply. But anything else, I'll reply pretty much all day, answer any question that you have. And I update everything, everything up until lock. I don't just do it once and leave it there. I update it constantly throughout lock just because you guys know how crazy NBA news can get. And then every single week, I do NASCAR, which I absolutely love NASCAR. It's more of a niche sport, but that's why I really like it because not a lot of people do it. Like everyone does NBA, everyone does NFL. Not very many people do NASCAR, and I feel like I do a pretty good job teaching how to play NASCAR DFS. Like I always say, I don't give out lineups, but I pretty much give you all the tools you should need to be able to make your own successful lineups. And I know a lot of people in my Discord chat and people that sign up on Patreon have no idea about anything about NASCAR, but I've gotten some good feedback on the articles I write. I do articles every single week, breaking down strategy, and I've had a couple of people take down tournaments using my projections and that stuff, so... It's been a pretty good season so far in NASCAR, and so if you do want to sign up for NASCAR, it's probably what I recommend the most. I feel like that's my best thing I do, and we have a race coming up tomorrow, because if you're watching this, it's probably Saturday, so we have a race coming up tomorrow, and I'll have all my NASCAR content put out tonight or this afternoon, so if you want to check that out, feel free to do so. I should have a video up around by 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and MLB's coming up in less than 20 days, which was one of the first things I started doing on YouTube. I started with NASCAR, then I went MLB. Love MLB. I love it so much. It's my, it's it's up there with NASCAR. It's my favorite DFS sport and just favorite sport in general. So yeah, I tired big data sheet for that. I'm debating on doing an article for that. I'm not totally sure, but I have a huge uh, spreadsheet for MLB. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully you guys are too. So we got some stuff to look forward to in the near future. But I think that's enough shameless plugging. Let's get into today's video. So up top, we got Trey Young, who comes in at 10,100, and he is listed as questionable for this game. Fortunately, he does not have the coronavirus. He made that very clear on Twitter that the illness was not that bad because everyone was speculating that it was corona. He's good. He's good. He's got uh, flu-like symptoms, though, so I'm not sure if he's going to end up playing or not. It's a Saturday. I could see them giving him the day off again, but again, I have no idea how he's feeling, so he's going to be on the sheet, and for assuming he plays and gets around 35-ish minutes, He's our top spend up of the slate because I know Joel Embiid's hurt, so he's not going to be playing, and the Rockets game starts at 5. So it basically leaves Trey Young as the best option to pay up for as long as he's healthy and good to go. And obviously there could be worries that he's not going to play the best if he's still a little bit sick, but I don't think they're going to run him out there unless he's feeling pretty much 100%. And this is going to be the best game of the slate for DFS purposes. We have Memphis versus Atlanta, and if I had to guess, again, there's no totals out yet, which I should probably check, but before I check... I will guess this game is around 240. It just seems like a 240 game. So let me just check really quick and see if there's any totals out. Okay, the total's not out yet. But if I had to guess, it's gonna, probably going to be around 240. And I have to imagine it's going to be a pretty tight spread. So definitely want exposure to this game. And Trey Young just feels a bit too cheap. He's more of like a 10,500 kind of guy. So getting him right around 10,000 just feels like a steal. I shouldn't say an absolute steal, but it's just, it just feels like a little bit of a steal. Now, the last game, or last night, I should say, he didn't play, but he was priced at 9,800, I believe, which was just entirely too cheap. Unfortunately, he did not end up playing. But yeah, I still like Trey Young here. Great matchup versus Memphis. This is going to be an elite game environment. Both teams are top 10 in pace of play. Atlanta is fourth, and Memphis is seventh, and they're both dumpster fires defensively. If you look at the DVP chart, Atlanta's obviously the worst defensive team in the league, just so bad in all categories. But Memphis is also bottom 10, and they rank 18th versus point guards, 25th versus shooting guards. So they've struggled versus guards all season. And Trey Young's numbers are great this season. 1.43 points per minute, 34.8% usage rate. I think is a tremendous option as long as he's good to go. And if he's not good to go, I'll cover that later on in this video. Uh, Damian Lillard, he comes in at 9,600. I don't remember exactly how he did tonight, but I don't think he had the best game in the world. And before we get into that, Portland was playing Phoenix. How about Aaron Baines? I think that might have been the best DFS performance of all time. If someone can remember a better performance, like point per dollar wise, because I know like Harden scored like 100 before, but if anyone can, if anyone uh, knows if there's a better game than Aaron Baines put up. So he was the min price 3K and he scored what, 69.25 points. That's, that's over 20X. I, was it like 22, 23X, maybe 24X? He'd... Best game I've ever seen, personally, just point-per-dollar-wise. He went 
absolutely nuclear. If you didn't have him, it was pretty much GG for you uh, tonight. Hopefully you had him because I said he was one of my favorite plays. But if you didn't and you still cashed, that's kind of amazing in its own. So, But hopefully you guys played Aaron Baines and just enjoyed that amazing game. He was very high-owned. I think he was probably, what, 90-some percent in cash games, and he was 70% of my GPP. But, yeah, Aaron Baines, he went nuclear, but enough about Aaron Baines. Let's talk about Damian Lillard. So he's got a good matchup versus Sacramento. They're a pretty solid defensive squad, but when it comes to the guard position, they do struggle. So if we find them, they're actually in the bottom half when it comes to defense, which is not good for matchup purposes for the offense. But as you can see, they're much better versus big men than they are versus guards, ranking first and sixth versus power forwards and centers. But if you put that to the guard position, they rank 16th and 22nd. So they have struggled versus guards this season. So I think Damian Lillard's going to be fine. His minutes are going to be full go. He's not on a minutes limit or anything. And... Look at his numbers on the season, 1.35 points per minute, 30.5% usage rate. But I will say before he got injured, he was playing way above that 1.35 points per minute rate. I mean, it was just astronomical numbers. Now he's not going to do that the rest of the season. But it just this is kind of this is the kind of upside Damian Lillard has every single night. So he's fine in tournaments. I'd rather play Trey Young as long as he's good to go. But I still think he's fine. He's a better tournament play than he is in cash games. But I could see you making the case to play him in cash games. Uh, Nikola Jokic, he comes in at 9,400. He gets a really soft matchup versus Cleveland. Now, this game environment kind of sucks as both teams are playing pretty darn slow. They're 20th in pace of play while Cleveland is 21st. Now, you could worry about a blow here considering Kevin Porter's out, Darius Garland's out, and Andre Drummond's questionable. But this game is playing played in Cleveland, which might help it stay a little bit close. And I don't know exactly what the spread is in this game, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's around double digits. But... I mean, the matchup versus Cleveland, I don't like projecting blowouts. So if he gets full minutes versus Cleveland, he should smash. They rank 23rd versus centers. And we know Nikola Jokic has triple-double upside every single night. And his numbers are great in the season. 1.44 points per minute with a 26.9% usage rate. So you get, Nikola Jokic, you can play him in cash games. And I think you can also play him in GBPs at that price tag. Hassan Whiteside, he had a really good game last night. Over 50 fantasy points and a good matchup versus Phoenix. And now he gets a tough matchup versus Sacramento, like I already touched on earlier. They're pretty good versus big man, ranking sec, uh, ranking sixth versus the position. But Hassan Whiteside has just been so good this season for fantasy purposes. So I'm willing to give him a shot. And he's at 1.34 points per minute. And I don't think there's ever been a slate where Whiteside's on the slate and I don't recommend him. <laughs> no matter the price, I feel like I recommend him every single slate. But I just like playing the guys. So Hassan Whiteside, he's fine. I don't know if I'd get there in cash games, but I think he's fine in tournament play. Because we know he's got 20-20 upside, if not more. Uh, John Collins, so he kind of came back from the dead last night. I actually ended up playing him in my single entry because, you know, no Trey Young, and I wanted exposure to that game. So I figured, you know, John, John Collins is obviously going to get a big bump with Trey Young being out. And he sucked in the beginning half. He finished pretty well. But, yeah, he sucked in the first half. I think he only had, like, 21 fantasy points at the end of the half, which, or was it 21? It might have been a little bit less, but I don't remember. I feel like it might have been might have been a little worse. Was it? Did he have 11? I just know he had a snowflake right beside his name for a while. Ended up going off in the fourth quarter, finishing the game with 47 DraftKings points, which I was perfectly fine with. Uh, as of right now, I'm in first place. I don't know if that's going to hold because Giannis is coming after me. But uh, there's also a lot of Anthony Davis lineups that are complete trash now because he had three quick fouls and he only has seven fantasy points in the first half, which if you play Anthony Davis, that really sucks for you. But, yeah, he's having a rough go. But, yeah, these Giannis lineups are coming for me. But as of right now, I'm in first, so we'll see if we can hold... Not sure if I will, but got sidetracked. But anyway, yeah, John Collins. Uh, I mean, if Trey Young's out, so if Trey Young plays, I'm not going to have really much interest in John Collins at this price tag. But if Young's out, obviously John Collins is going to get a bump here. And his numbers have been fine all season. He's at 1.24 points per minute, 22% usage rate. You take Trey Young off the court, that's around 1.3 points per minute. And obviously the usage rate goes even up more, even more. And this is a good matchup versus Memphis. They've struggled defensively all season. This is going to be a fast-paced game. Memphis ranks 17th versus power forward, 17th versus center. So, you know, John Collins, I like him in tournaments a lot. And if Trey Young's out, I wouldn't mind him in cash games either because you're definitely going to want exposure to this game. Tobias Harris, he went off in the last game, scored around 50 fantasy points, and now he gets a really good matchup here versus Golden State. So I, don't, I, I think we could go back to the well here on Tobias Harris. Sorry to get a quick drink, but we were talking about Tobias Harris, and yeah, he had a great game last time out, and he's going against Golden State, which is one of the better matchups you can ask for as an offensive player. If you look at the DVP chart, Golden State ranks fifth worst defensively this season. Man, Minnesota just keeps getting worse and worse on defense. I remember they used to be down where Chicago was in Charlotte. Now they're actually maybe even a little bit better. Now they're all the way up to fourth worst, but 
yeah, Golden State, I mean, they struggle defensively in all aspects. Uh, a little bit better versus power forwards, but, you know, for small forwards. They're ranked 27 versus them, but 15 versus power forwards. So either way, this is a pretty good matchup for Tobias Harris. And if you look at his numbers on the season, they've been strong. He's at 1.03 points from at the 23.5% usage rate. But if you take Ben Simmons off the court, you take Joel Embiid off the court, you take Josh Richardson off the court, it's about 1.2-ish points per minute with a near 30% usage rate. So definitely gets huge bumps with those guys off the court. So I know he's a little bit expensive at 8,300, but he certainly has 50, 60 point upside as long as he's hot uh, from the field. So Tobias Harris, don't mind him. Christian Wood, 8,200. It seems like whenever he's on the slate, I recommend him. I guess I just have a nice soft spot for Christian Wood. And he usually doesn't have bad games. I mean, if you look at his game log, he's hasn't really had a bad game in a while. I mean, this matchup versus Utah is not amazing or anything. And the pace of play for this game is going to suck too. I mean, both teams are bottom five in pace of play, which is not great. But I still think Christian Wood can have a good game. Now, if you look at the matchup versus Utah, it's not pretty. They rank six versus power forwards, 12th versus centers. But he's been playing pretty well in bad matchups before. I think recently he had a game versus Sacramento where he played very well. So, yeah, I don't mind Christian Wood in tournaments. Not going to play him in cash games at 8,200, but tournaments, I think that's fine. I mean, you have so many guys out for Detroit. You know, no Derrick Rose, no Reggie Jackson, no Blake Griffin, no Luke Kennard, no Andre Drummond. I mean, you got pretty much nobody's on the team at this point. No Marquise Morris. So, yeah, Wood's going to be forced to play around 35 minutes. And if you look at his numbers on the season, 1.16 points per minute, 22.5% usage rate. You take all those guys off the court, it's around 1.3 points per minute with a near 30% usage rate. So, Christian Wood, I think he's fine for tournaments. Uh, Steph Curry, so they said he had a 25-minute limit last game. He ended up playing a little bit over 27 minutes and ended up playing pretty well. I think he had around 40 fantasy points, if I remember correctly, which is not amazing for Steph Curry, but he's also usually priced around 10k now we're getting him at 8k i know he's still on a minutes limit but there's merit for playing him in gpps because if he can stay hot from three he could get 50 fantasy points in a short amount of time i mean we've seen him we've seen him do it before i mean and if he was priced at nine nine ish k or 10k obviously no way of paying uh paying that much for him for only getting less than 30 minutes but at 8k i mean there's a case we made in tournaments won't do it in cash games because i just need i need guys to get minutes in cash games but for tournaments if curry comes out hot from three and maybe the game's close and they just run him an extra few minutes that's kind of a steal at 8k so only going to play him in tournaments but even then it's kind of fringe a fringe tournament play but you can make the case for him he had a good game last time out over 40 fantasy points which isn't terrible i think he went around 5x so or was it like 4 to 5x, which isn't terrible. So tournaments, you don't mind Steph Curry. I mean, if you look at his numbers on the season, 1.42 points per minute, 33.5% usage rate. I know he's only going to get around 27 minutes, but that's actually not too bad at 1.42 points per minute at 8K. So Curry's a fringe tournament play, but there's merit for playing him. A De'Aaron Fox, 7,900. Like, he's a much safer play in cash games. Like, if you had to pick between the two of De'Aaron Fox or Steph Curry, I'm going with De'Aaron Fox just because the minutes are more stable. And... You know, you got, yeah, I like the matchup versus Portland. It's an excellent matchup here. They're one of the worst defensive teams in the league. They're ranked 26 versus point guards. So this is a great matchup for De'Aaron Fox. And he's been great point per minute wise this season. 1.2 points per minute, 29.6% usage rate. You don't have to worry about him cracking 30 minutes. He's going to get, you know, mid 30s minutes. So De'Aaron Fox, I think he's totally fine in all formats. Uh, Rudy Gobert, 7,600. I Just for starters, I hate playing Rudy Gobert. Whenever I play him, he probably scores like 20 fantasy points. But he has been playing okay the past two games. And he gets a good matchup versus the Detroit squad. Pretty much has no one left on this team. But, again, this game expo- not game exposure. This pace in this game is going to suck. But I think Rudy Gobert is fine. He's at 1.14 points around the season. Low usage rate, but it's Rudy Gobert. What do you expect? Going to play elements he can handle if the game stays close. There's no spread for this game yet, so again, I have no idea. I could check and see if they have any posted yet, because that would be helpful at least halfway through this video. Still no totals out yet. If I had to guess, this is probably going to have one of, if not the lowest totals of all the games today. Maybe Cleveland-Denver beats them out, but yeah, not expecting a high total in Utah versus Detroit, but I, I don't mind Rudy Gobert. I mean, Detroit's been terrible defensively all season, and they got rid of all of their players, so I mean, they just pretty much a sieve defensively and they rank near bottom five versus big men i know a lot of that has to do with andre drummond playing there most of the year which andre drummond's not a great defender in the slightest but they don't really have anyone that could contend down low with rudy gobert so don't hate rudy gobert at that price tag not my favorite play in the world but i wouldn't yell at you for playing him donovan mitchell 7500 I'd, I'd rather play donovan mitchell over rudy gobert because 
I just trust Donovan Mitchell more, and that might sound scary to say because Donovan Mitchell can be very hit or miss, but he has been playing pretty well, well recently, so I don't mind going with Mitchell. And if you look at the DVP chart, Detroit has not been great versus shooting guards this season. They rank 16th versus the position, which is you know bottom half in the league. They, they struggle more versus big men than they do versus guards, but I wouldn't shy away from playing a guard versus Detroit by any means, and Mitchell in the season got around 30% usage rate, 31.3%, with a 1.13 point per minute rate, so Donovan Mitchell, I think he's fine in all formats, Jay Valley comes in at 7,300, I like him a lot here versus Atlanta, so last time he was facing off versus Atlanta, I believe he was below 7k, I, I want to say he was 6,800, that sounds about right, and I know it's, what, 500 more price-wise, but I still Still think he's a really good play here because again there's some missing pieces down low for Memphis and I don't see how Jonas Valanciunas doesn't pay off his price tag here I know he can be very up or down like very very up or down he can score 68 fantasy points he can score like 20 fantasy points he's the better version of Jared Allen with a lot more upside most nights and he's a little bit he's obviously not like Jared Allen where he's going to score like less than 20 points all the time he's usually going to get you 20 points but he can be very up or down get first price tag, but I think if we're going to get one of those up games versus Atlanta, they have suck down low. I mean, they are just getting so, so bad versus big men this season. Or I should say as the season progresses, because as of right now, they are ranked 29th versus centers earlier in the year. That was in the teens. Now it's getting near, they're about to take over Chicago's last spot at 30. I mean, they're just so bad versus big men. And last time that Valanchunas played Atlanta, he was going off. Like, he was going absolutely off, but he didn't even have to play in the fourth quarter because that game wasn't even close. But he was on his way to a huge game. I mean, he had, what, 40 fantasy points when he before he never came back in. He could have had another 60 fantasy point game. He was playing very, very well. Now, I want to say he had, like, eight rebounds in the first couple minutes of that game. He was just... He was going on... He, he's on his way to Smash City, and I don't see why that would change here. And this game's going to be a track meet. You're going to want exposure to this game. If I had to guess, it's going to be around a 240 total, especially if Trey Young plays. I mean, if Trey Young plays, I could see that being in the mid-240s. We saw that the Atlanta game yesterday versus Washington uh, started off with a 245 total, ended up getting knocked down to 240 when Trey Young was ruled out. But, yeah, Valanchunas, I think he's an excellent play. Love the matchup. And the guy's great point per minute-wise, 1.29 points per minute. I mean, that's very, very good. That's the best we've talked about since Steph Curry, which he doesn't really count because he's more of a – 10k kind of guy so that's the best point per rate we've seen since Hassan Whiteside at 90 at 8900 so love the matchup of Valanciunas here I think he's an excellent option John Moran on the same team he's always a GPP guy a lot pretty much everyone on Memphis is GPPs <laughs> they never really save cash game plays but you can make the case for them in cash games in this matchup versus Atlanta they just seem a little bit priced down here especially for the spot that they're in so Definitely want exposure to Memphis. You know, John Moran's got major, major upside. He's also got major downside. Like, a lot of these guys on Memphis, they can be very up or down. But I'm willing to bet on them having a pretty good game versus Atlanta. One of the worst, not one of the worst defensive team in the league. Ranking 22nd versus point guards. And recently, we've seen John Morant, you know, get near 60 fantasy points a couple of times. He's got that upside for it. And on the season, 1.13 points per minute, 26% usage rate. I think John Morant's fine in all formats. Jamal Murray gets that elite matchup versus Cleveland. As I always say, if you're a guard going up against Cleveland, you make this chart just by default because they rank 30th versus point guards and 30th versus shooting guards. They are trash defensively versus guards. So Jamal Murray, I think he's fine. Jamal Murray's got upside, but he's another guy that can be very hit or miss. I don't really like rostering Jamal Murray. I want to say I've done it less than three times so far this whole season. But I think he's fine versus Cleveland. You know, Colin Sexton's a terrible defender, and I would say Darius Garland's a terrible defender, which he is, but he's not going to be playing in this game. So he's going to have to go against Matthew Della Vadova, which I know if you're thinking about the finals that he's a pretty solid defender. But if you look at Della Vadova's defensive writing this season, it's at 119, which is literally like dead last. So, yeah, he's not been a great defender this season, so I don't have any concerns about that whatsoever. So Jamal Murray, I think he's going to be fine. Al Horford, he comes in at 6,600. Again, another guy that's going to benefit with no Joel Embiid, no Josh Richardson, no Ben Simmons. If you look at his numbers on the season, he's at 0.98 points per minute with a 17% usage rate. You take those guys off the court, it's around 1.2 points per minute with over a 20% usage rate. So 6,600, I think Al Horford's one of the safer cash game options on this slate, especially going up against Golden State, who sucks defensively. And if you look at their record versus big men, they rank 20th and 15th versus power forward. So Al Horford, I think he's a fine option. Have no concerns about playing him. Kevin Herter, I think that's how you say his name. I always 
I want to say it's something different, but I'm pretty sure it's Kevin Herter. But either way, the guy plays pretty darn well most nights, and especially if Trey Young's out, we certainly got to have some interest in Kevin Herter. He'd be one of my favorite plays on the slate. He was one of my favorite plays last night once Trey Young ended up getting ruled out. So if Trey Young's out, we can certainly look his way. He's, what, dropped 37 fantasy points last night, which I think we could see something similar. Maybe he gets close to 40. If you look at his numbers on the season, he's at .83 points from it, the 17% usage rate, but obviously those numbers go up without Trey Young on the court. If you take him off the court, his numbers would read. 0.87 points per with over a 20% usage rate. So Kevin Herter, definitely be on my radar, especially in this elite game environment if Trey Young is out. If Trey Young's in, you could still get away with playing Kevin Herter, but I'd prefer him if Trey Young happens to be out. Buddy Heald, I don't love it, but he's cheap, and he's got three-point upside, and I like the matchup versus Portland. Uh, I was considering not even putting him on here, but I don't know. He might be a sneaky GBP play. It was this game in the late game, I believe. Get yeah, 10 p.m. I don't know. If you guys want a late game piece, you can go with Buddy Heald. I don't know. Not my favorite player in the world, but, you know, he's going to get around 30 minutes. And he's at 1.05 points from the season, 27% usage rate. He's got three-point upside. If he's hitting, he'll play extra minutes. If he's not, he'll get benched late in the game. We've seen it happen before. So Buddy Heald, he's fine at this price tag. I mean, he's really cheap, so I don't mind it. Uh, Mike Conley, 4900 I think he's going to be a great point-per-dollar option tomorrow. He just, I don't know why he's below 5 k He's been playing well for a big stretch recently so 4900 just seems a bit too cheap especially in a good matchup versus detroit who's pretty much given up on the season and if you look at his number versus point guards they rank 12th versus the position but i still think he's going to be fine don't have any worries about that they have really no reason to try defensively anymore at this point but this game environment does suck i will say that so that's the only concern but on the season 0.9 points per minute 22 percent usage rate but he's been playing much better than that recently so Mike Conley, I still think he's a pretty solid option, especially below 5K. Like, I was playing this guy when he was mid-5K, so or lower mid-5K. So, 4,900 feels like a steal. Dylan Brooks, I want exposure to this game. So, Dylan Brooks below 5K seems like a pretty good safe option, in my opinion. So, the last time I played him, he started off really, really bad, and he finished okay. If you look at his recent games, he has been playing better, but he really struggled in the last one, but I think he can bounce back, especially versus Atlanta, the worst defensive team in the entire league. If you look at the DVP chart, they rank 29th versus shooting guards and 30th versus small forwards, so it's pretty much the best that matchup you can ask for if you're Dylan Brooks. And on the season, he's at .9 points per minute with a 24.9% usage rate, so Dylan Brooks, I like him quite a bit, especially if you're game stacking this game up, but you could play him in cash and tournaments. Paul Millsap, never a guy that's going to play monster minutes. Probably going to play around 25, if not less, especially if this game gets out of hand early. Game environment sucks, but I like the matchup versus Cleveland. He's about a point per minute guy in the year. 4,700 just seems a bit too cheap, so Paul Millsap wouldn't hate if he played him. If you look at the DVP chart, uh, Cleveland ends up ranking 22nd versus power forward. So don't hate going with Paul Millsap. Uh, Teddy Osman, he comes in at 4,600. So the only nice thing I can say about Osman is that he's going to play a lot of minutes, and that pretty much ends the nice things I can say about Osman because other than that, he's pretty bad at basketball. Not like for real. I mean, he's in the NBA. Obviously, he's good at basketball relative to other basketball players in the NBA. Not the best guy out there. If you look at his numbers on the season, 0.72 points per minute, 16.4% usage rate. But also, uh, Garland's going to be out as is Kevin Porter. So he's going to be locked in from 35 to 40 minutes. I want to say he played over 40 minutes in the last game. And the numbers aren't pretty, and they don't go up that much, even with those guys off the court. But he's around 0.77 points per minute with those guys off and around a 20% usage rate. So I know the matchup versus Denver sucks. The game environment sucks. But I still like him at that price tag just because he's going to play so many minutes. And if you look at the DVP chart, Denver does rank First versus shooting guards, fifth versus small forward. So this is not a good matchup for him. But, I mean, at that price tag and those minutes he's going to play, I, I think he's going to be fine. If we go down to Cam Reddish. So I only have interest here if Trey Young misses because if Trey Young is in, it's going to hurt his minutes a little bit. But I shouldn't say if Trey Young's in, it, doesn't, it takes all, the way, all my likeness of Cam Reddish, but... It wouldn't help. He's still gonna. I still got him for around 30 minutes of Trey Young plays, as you can see, 35 and a half minutes, 30 minutes. It's just that the usage rate goes down, the points per minute goes down. But if Trey Young's out, I think Cam Reddish is one of the locks here. I don't remember exactly how he did tonight. I want to say he scored 35 points, which not real life points, but fantasy points, which is just fine at his price tag, and I really didn't rise his price too much. 
So if Trey Young's out, I feel like Cam Reddish is going to be one of my core plays. I mean, he should get around 30 minutes, if not more, when if Trey Young is listed as out. The matchup versus Memphis is amazing and good pace. And Memphis does struggle versus shooting guards. They rank where are they at? Yeah, 25th versus shooting guards. This would be a great, great spot for Cam Reddish on the season. He's at 0.75 points per minute, which isn't great, but obviously that number goes up without Trey on the court. So Cam Reddish would be an amazing play if Trey Young's out. If Trey Young's in, he's more of a secondary option at a good price tag in a good game environment. And then after that, we're kind of getting to the nitty-gritty, just hoping these guys get some minutes and pay off. But they're all decent point per minute wise besides Del Vadova, which we'll talk about. But DeAnthony Melton comes in at 4,400. So if you look at Melton and Tyus Jones' box score the last time they played Atlanta, you're gonna th- you're gonna tell yourself that's an absolute lock play because of what they did. Well, just remember that game was a blowout, so they got extended minutes late in the game, which really raised their stock that night. But yeah, Melton, I like him here, even if this game doesn't blow out or anything. He should get around 25 minutes, which is what I haven't projected for. And the matchup versus Atlanta's elite, I could keep showing you the DVP chart, but you guys get the idea by now. Atlanta sucks defensively. And Anthony Melton, he should be able to excel here while he's on the court. He's a 1.04 points per on the season, which is great for this price tag. And 19.9% usage rate. So D'Anthony Melton certainly on my radar, as is Dwayne Dedman's thing in this game again. Now, I don't remember what he did last night, so I should probably look really quick just to make sure he didn't absolutely suck. Okay, so he played like 20 minutes tonight, and he did, o- he did okay. <laughs> Not amazing, but... Not too bad given his price tag. They did raise his price tag a little bit at 4300 but I'm still willing to take a shot here just because Memphis is just so bad defensively. They're probably going to want him out there with Jonas Valanciunas to contend him at the rim and then rank bottom half in the league versus big men. So Dwayne Dedman, I don't mind in here. He's decent point per minute wise given his price tag. 0.91 points per minute. So Dedman, he's okay. Tyus Jones, he's not going to be as locked for as much minutes as D'Anthony Melton, but... He's still be okay. He's going to get around 20 minutes. He's a little bit cheaper. Obviously, I prefer Melton because he's only 200 more and his minutes are more secure. But if this game wouldn't happen to get out of hand by any chance, Tyus Jones has been playing pretty well recently. If you look at his recent game log, very, very good. I don't like just looking at box scores just to say a guy's a good play. But if, you know, recent form in the past two games, playing very well. So confidence is up, I'm sure. Probably getting some better sleep at night. But, uh, yeah, Tyus Jones, he's about a point printed guy, 0.95 points minute, which is not too bad at this price tag, so... Don't hate it. Love the game environment. Uh, Jeff Teague, I have him listed here in case Trey Young misses this game. He ended up being around 90% owned last night, and it's for a good reason. He didn't absolutely crush the world, but he still scored 20 fantasy points, which is <laughs> not too bad at his price tag. Sorry, he had a drink. I don't, I don't know what happened. But yeah, uh, he got 20 fantasy points last night, which was not too bad at all, <laughs> given his price tag. That raised his price tag a little, a little bit, but... He'll still be pretty popular if Trey Young misses. The minutes were there. Ended up around the start. And a good matchup versus Memphis. We won exposure to this game. So, Jeff Teague makes sense on the season. 0.93 points per minute. So, obviously, he'd be a good option. And for value supreme, we have none other than Matthew Delavadova at 3,100. Now, I'm a Cavs fan. I'm not, like, a huge Cavs fan because I care more about the Indians and Browns than I do the Cavs. I just pretty much care about DFS for basketball, not, like, the Biggest, biggest basketball fan in the world, but I love it for DFS. So I'm not, I'm pretty much just a LeBron fan when LeBron comes back to Cleveland. <laughs> so, uh, but man, Delhi, he was awesome in that finals that one year when he just <laughs> gave it his all to stop Curry the one game when he went to the hospital, got the IV. But he sucks, <laughs> just to put it nicely, he sucks. <laughs> but he should be forced into big minutes here. Now, I know he played big minutes last game, and I think he had like a 9% usage rate, and he still didn't do really anything at all. But, I don't know, he knows he's getting the start this time. Kevin Porter kind of threw him a curveball at the beginning of the game last time, uh, last game because he forgot his jersey, so they had to throw him in the game. I don't know. But no Kevin Porter, no Darius Garland. He's going to be locked into around 30 minutes, and maybe he gets 20 fantasy points. If he gets 20 fantasy points at 3,100, is anyone complaining? Not really. I mean, maybe watching him play, you'd complain because it's going to be awful. But you never know. Maybe you get a couple of deli trays, and maybe he has one of those 25, 30 point games. I mean, hey, anything can happen. We just saw Aaron Baines drop 70 fantasy points, so literally anything can happen from here on out this season. But yeah, deli's fine. I mean, if you look at his numbers on the season, it's going to scare you. 0.65 points per minute, 13% usage rate. 
Now, I'd love to be able to tell you that those numbers go up a lot when you take Porter and Garland off the court, but that's just not the case. It only goes up to around 0. .67. I know it's terrible, but think P.J. Tucker. We play P.J. Tucker sometimes, and the numbers are pretty similar, but he has a better usage rate. So, I don't know. We'll take it. I mean, 3100 he's cheap. Okay, That's all I can really tell you guys about Matthew Del Vadova. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Not really the player-by-player -player breakdown. But before we get out of here, I do want to talk about OverlayDFS.com before we get out of here for good. All right, so you guys, are, if you guys are new to the channel, this is OverlayDFS.com. I really do enjoy playing over here. I would not recommend it to you guys if I didn't play it there myself. And I think it's a nice change of pace from playing on DraftKings. And I'm not saying you have to quit playing on DraftKings just to play on Overlay. That's a good supplement into playing DraftKings. Because DraftKings, I love DraftKings. I absolutely love it. But it's a real grind. You gotta build lineups. You gotta build projections, or at least I do anyway. But then you have to do some a lot of critical thinking on how to build your lineup optimally. You gotta figure out ownership, all that good stuff. Salary cap restrictions, how many lineups you want to enter. It's really, really simple here at Overlay. You just pick whoever you think's gonna score the most points in that given matchup. It's as simple as that. It does not destroy your brain thinking about how to build lineups on DraftKings. So, for example, this is from a few nights ago. Uh, if you thought Fred Van Vliet was going to score Bledsoe, you picked Van Vliet. Obviously, that wasn't the case, but that's what I thought. If you thought Hayward was going to score SGA, you pick Hayward. And if you thought Fox was going to score Andrew Wiggins, you picked De'Aaron Fox. Guys, it's as simple as that. And if you win those, if you win that matchup, it goes to your record, which is over there. And if you finish in the top 10% of the contest, you win 9 extra money. And I think it's one of the best things about Overlay is their payout structure. If you finish in the top 10%, you win 9x your money. To, to go 9x on DraftKings, you have to win the whole thing sometimes. Or even sometimes if you do win the whole contest, sometimes you don't even still don't even 9x your money. So I love, love, love the payout structure at Overlay DFS. And yeah, there's no promo code required or anything. You don't have to hit a link. Just go over to the site. It's exactly how it sounds. OverlayDFS.com. Try it out. Have fun. And the big thing that's going on right now, it's just kind of the attention grabber. If you go 12-0 in your picks, you can get $16,000. $16,000. Do not miss on the chance to win that. It's legit. There's no strings of tie. You don't have to do anything special. If you go 12-0 in your picks that night, you can take on the jackpot. It's around 100 day that no one. It's been about 100 days since no one's hit, so it's bound to get hit soon. So if someone's going to hit it, why not you? I'm hoping it's me, but if it's not me, I hope it's one of you guys that are watching this video. And they also have a slump buster challenge where if you lose 20 days in a row, not consecutively, but say you play once a week, for 20 weeks in a row, and you lose every single time, unfortunately. They'll refund every single dollar you deposited. And if you go 0-12 in your picks one day, they'll give you 500 bucks just for sucking. So try it out, guys. OverlayDFS.com. That's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy the weekend. If you want to watch or get any of my NASCAR content, check it out. I feel like I do a really good job breaking down NASCAR. I put a lot of work into it every single week. So check it out. We've had a lot of good success so far. And, yeah. Hop in my Discord, and that's going to be it for this video. Hope it was helpful. Enjoy your Saturday, and I'm going to be checking out.